This video explores a paper generating Wikipedia by summarizing long sequences from Google AI. This experiment explores a really interesting application of natural language processing, which is generating unique summaries from a massive set of source documents about a given topic. The data set they deal with in this paper is really interesting. They collect 2 million input-output pairs for supervised learning in which the input is all of the articles cited in the Wikipedia page, as well as the top 10 search results of that topic. In order to make this problem more tractable, they filter the raw data with a TF-IDF extractive algorithm that's then passed into the transformer abstractive summarization model. This paper introduces a lot of interesting transformer details, like reducing the memory overhead by dropping the encoder half and using a decoder-only transformer. They also introduce a memory compressed attention layer that approximates full attention by alternating between these layers that either split the input sequence up contiguously and then pass each chunk into a separate attention layer or use strided convolutions to reduce the size of embedding matrices in the key and value matrices. This video will explore miscellaneous details of the experiments in this paper. This video will explore the paper generating Wikipedia by summarizing long sequences from researchers at Google AI. They use a transformer decoder architecture with a novel approximation to full attention in order to generate opening sections of Wikipedia articles when input in a collection of reference documents about the topic. These experiments are looking at abstractive summarization. Extractive summarization describes taking a massive set of documents and then exactly copying sentences from the reference documents in order to make up the summary of it. Differently, abstractive summarization describes using a language model to generate the summary. So the final summary is composed of original language from the generative model, or so to say, to summarize it in your own words. The authors of this paper construct a really interesting data set that they call Wikisum. Wikisum uses all the articles referenced in a Wikipedia article and the top 10 search results from Google as the input for the language model and the output is the lead section of a Wikipedia article. It's really interesting to think of the construction of these massive data sets for natural language processing tasks. At the end of this, they end up with about 2 million of these source documents to Wikipedia article pairs. These experiments are all testing generating this opening section of the Wikipedia article rather than the full article, although they do show the capability of putting these together and having a coherent full article in the appendix of the paper. Table 1 shows some interesting characteristics of this data set compared to previous works on abstractive and extractive summarization. The Wikisum data set has a fortunate structure in the output space because most Wikipedia articles follow a style guide but they still have a massive variance in the style of the inputs because it's coming from all sorts of different articles around the web. Additionally, the input for the Wikisum dataset is much larger than previously studied uh, datasets on this as well as in the output space. The uh, ROUGE or Rouge 1 recall score is a metric signaling the overlap of output words contained in the input. So this lower score indicates that less of the output is uh, contained in the input and it also indicates that it's a harder task having a lower uh, Rouge 1 score. Table 2 shows a massive variance in the Wikisum dataset. A lot of Wikipedia entries have very few references, which is why the dataset is supplemented with Google search results as well. The input data space of all of the articles referenced in the Wikipedia article, as well as the top 10 Google search results, is too large to do end-to-end -to -end abstractive summarization with. So what they do is they first have a middleman extractive uh, summarization pipeline that uses things like TF-IDF or a cheating method to uh, exactly extract the uh, paragraphs from the raw data that has the most overlap with the target summary in order to filter the data and make it more tractable for abstractive summarization. In the paper, they explore five different techniques for extractive summarization as the middleman in between the raw data and the abstractive summarization task. But I, I chose to isolate these two because I think it's the most uh, interesting for the sake of summarizing this paper. So the term frequency inverse document frequency is basically weighting the number of times the word appears in this document compared to the number of documents and then the overall number of times that word appears in all of the documents. So say you have a word like TensorFlow and that's the query and then you would see how many times que uh, TensorFlow appears in this new document times the inverse of how many documents there are and then how many times uh, TensorFlow appears in all the documents. So you use this in order to rank the paragraphs that have the most similarity with the query. In this case, the query is like the topic of the Wikipedia article. And the other thing that they show is cheating. So Cheating would be like the, you know, the Oracle extractive summarization task where you have the reference to the final target uh, paragraph. And so you're doing the bigrams between these different paragraphs that you're ranking as well as the target uh, summary of the paragraph. So ideally, you'd imagine having this high overlap between the output and then the, each of these paragraphs would give you a lot of key information for constructing that uh, target paragraph. So after the extractive summarization methods like TF-IDF and the cheating method or those other things like the identity, 
you pass this as the new input into the abstractive model. So there are four different abstractive models they test, the sequence to sequence LCM with attention, the transformer encoder decoder, then they present this novel transformer decoder, which is then used in GPT-2 and other of these transformer models that choose to abandon the encoder part of the transformer. And then they also introduce a new transformer decoder with memory compressed attention. The idea of the transformer decoder is to abandon this encoder half and just have the inputs in, uh, go right into the output space of the previous transformer architecture and then masking and doing this language modeling task. So the way that the uh, abstractive summarization model is trained is it has this sequence of M1 to N, which are the uh, ranked order of the paragraphs from the extractive summarization model that are then tokenized and then truncated to length N in order to fit into the memory. Then you have this special delta uh, separator token, and then you have the output, which is the uh, tokens of that uh, original Wikipedia opening paragraph that uses the input output label data set for supervised learning of abstractive summarization. So the way that the language model works is during training, it's gonna predict the input as well autoregressively as it uh, makes this first prediction, then shifts the mask over one, makes that prediction, then shifts the uh, attention mask over one, and does that in order to train the model. So originally it's predicting both the input and the separator token and then the output. But then later on when the model is deployed, it's just gonna have this input and then have the mask originally and then predict the output like that. One of the trickiest problems with training these transformer language models is the bottleneck of the dot product attention computation. When you do this query times a transposed key matrix, you have this uh, length by length matrix, which is really uh, difficult for memory constraints. So what they say in the paper is with their 16 gigabyte GPU, they're able to store a length of 4,000 tokens. But using this memory compressed attention, they're able to get this uh, input sequence length up to 11,000. So they present two different techniques for uh, doing an approximate to, approximation to full attention. The first of which is to take these uh, value and key matrices and then reduce the embedding length of them by using a strided convolution. So the strided convolution will take down the second dimension of the key matrix from length to you know, some smaller number. And then it'll do the same for the value matrix to line up the uh, dimensions of that matrix multiplication. Then the local attention is this idea of splitting the input sequence. So you take uh, the first 256 tokens and send it into this um, multi-head attention layer. Then you take the next 256 tokens and put them into a separate layer. So you'd split up the input sequence, pass them into separate attention heads, and then merge them with something like a fully connected layer. These are examples of different models with different ablations of the parameters of them on this task of summarizing this uh, Wikipedia post about this law firm. So you see the ground truth. This is the output that's used to train these models with the, uh, you know, from the Wikipedia article. So these are some of the different uh, summarizations written by these different models with different parameters. So this is the transformer encoder decoder attending on a sequence length of 100 tokens. This is just the decoder attending on 500 tokens. And this is the, uh, with the memory compressed attention attending on 7,000 tokens. And they also add this mixture of experts layer to add more model capacity to it. So you see how the uh, summary gets better with this model. And it's also good to see the, uh, you know, like the qualitative summarization is better as the automated metric of log perplexity is going down, which is a metric where lower is better. These are some of the results from the ablation showing the effect of the different extraction methods and then the different uh, input data set corpus. So the combined corpus describes using the uh, reference articles in the Wikipedia post, as well as the Google search results. So the citations only is only the, uh, the Wikipedia citations and search only is only the search results. So you see the combined corpus has the best performance by far. And then with respect to the extraction, you see that the cheating method where you're doing this uh, bigrams overlap between the raw combined uh, data set and then that final output uh, you know, opening section extracted from the Wikipedia article, when you do the bigrams between those paragraphs, that has the best result by a pretty high uh, you know, standard on this metric. So this implies that the uh, extractive method, it, they could further improve on this by having a better algorithm than the TF-IDF. This plot further shows the results of using an abstractive summarization model as well as the extractive summarization model. So this shows the performance of two other extractive methods that they use that I didn't describe in the video, text rank and sum basic. And you can see that they perform about the same as TF-IDF. But you see how when you use the abstractive summarization layer on top of the extractive summarization, you get a better performance on its overall summary of the input documents. This ablation further shows the performance differences between different parameters on the transformer and the LSTM sequence to sequence architecture. You see that the sequence to sequence model, the LSTM with attention, encoder decoder attention has the highest perplexity and really is heavily underperforming compared to the transformers. So first you have the transformer encoder decoder with attending over a sequence length of 500 and that has a decent perplexity, but you can see further improvements done by uh, dropping the encoder part, which allows you to attend over a long se longer sequence as well because you're cutting away the number of parameters in the model. And now you have, you're attending over a sequence length of 4,000 tokens. 
And then you see how you introduce this uh, full approximation to the attention, and then you get attention over 11,000 tokens, and then you add in this mixture of experts layer that you know increases the memory bottleneck. So eventually, as you have uh, 256 hidden units in the mixture of experts layer, you attend over a smaller sequence, but you achieve a better performance as a result of the higher capacity. This table shows the results of human evaluation on the summarizations, comparing the transformer with the compressed memory only having the decoder part, compared with only having the extractive summarization with the TF-IDF algorithm, and then the LSTM encoder-decoder sequence of sequence. And you see that this is evaluated on dimensions of focus, grammar, non-redundancy, referential clarity, and structure and coherence with the uh, transformer with the compressed memory performing the best. And then you can also see a comparison of two models that have different of uh, these automated scores and then also result in different human evaluation. So this is showing the correlation between the uh, human evaluators and then these automated metrics. Thanks for watching this video on generating Wikipedia by summarizing long sequences. This experiment explores supervised learning of transformers with a massive data set. Their Wikisum data set contains 2 million of these input-output pairs in which the input is all of the articles referenced in the Wikipedia page as well as the top 10 search results of the topic and the output is the original opening section of that Wikipedia article. This paper introduces a lot of other interesting ideas like the decoder only transformer and the memory compressed attention with the local attention and then the approximation with the strided convolutions. Thanks for watching and please subscribe to Henry AI Labs for more deep learning and AI videos.